Now, if you're after a mid-range smartphone, there's never been a better or a worse time than right now. It's great because there's tons of choice from super-powered gaming handsets to attention-seeking disco phones. But it's also more confusing than attempting advanced trigonometry after smashing back two dozen Jaeger bombs because seriously, which one are you supposed to buy? Well, one of the best options right now is Google's Pixel 6a, which I've been thoroughly poking and piddling about with for the past six weeks. You've got camera tech that punches above its weight, you've got unbeatable software support and a refreshingly compact design. But it ain't perfect, boyo. So here finally, after an extended period, is my full in-depth Pixel 6a review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So while I constantly moan on about how absolutely ruddy enormous most smartphones are these days, we've actually had quite a few mini handsets hit the UK recently, including the Zenfone 9 and Motorola's Edge 30 Neo. And of course, this wee beauty right here, the 6.1 inch Pixel 6a, which is blazingly pocket sized and a proper lightweight too at just 178 grams. Yeah, the chunky bezels add a bit of extra girth, but who doesn't like a bit of extra girth? This said, I do have a couple of criticisms of Google's design, starting with the rather meager choice of colours. Your selection is basically black, white, or a kind of sickly looking greeny hue that resembles something that I coughed up yesterday. Thankfully, this white model looks pretty sleek with its edge-to-edge -edge camera bump replicating the premium aesthetics of the Pixel 6 flagships. However, while the Pixel 6a's frame is constructed from metal, the arse end is basically just a sheet of plastic, and over the last few weeks it has scratched up pretty bloody badly. But thankfully that display is still in perfect nick thanks to the Gorilla Glass 3 Corton, and the Pixel 6a has the added benefit of IP67 dust and water resistance, quite the rarity for a mid-ranger beyond the, oh god, the iPhone SE 2022. Sorry. Every time I mention that smartphone, I inadvertently puke into my mouth a bit. Swiftly moving on to the software, and it's all gravy here because the Pixel 6a has already updated to the fresh new Android 13. It's not exactly a massive evolution over Android 12, but you've got all the best bits from Android 12 still, the likes of the live transcriptions and subtitling, the call screen, and all that good stuff. And now the overall design is slicker than ever, with themed icons and colours that carry through to all areas of the UI, and even snazzier notification bar and lock screen widgets too, including fast smart home access, which is handy when you need to quickly check your doorbell camera or flick a virtual light switch. Although in this early state, I have seen quite glitchy behaviour from some of those widgets. For instance, the media one claiming that music was being played when in fact it was most definitely paused. The bloody idiot. Security is tight. As always, you've got Google's Titan M2 core processor on here to securely stash away all of your biometrics and important secure data. Plus, Google is guaranteeing five years of security updates to keep you protected for the long haul. You've also got support for a physical SIM card as well as eSIM, and there's 128 gigs of onboard storage, but not expandable via microSD. Now, when I saw that Google had once again gone with an in-display fingerprint sensor for the Pixel 6a, my first thought was, oh bloody heck, here we go again. But thankfully, it's been a marked improvement over the Pixel 6. It's not exactly as fast acting as some rivals, but it is dependable, only really feeling when your hands are proper messed up and grubby. There's no face unlock as an alternative, unfortunately, and no sign of it being added anytime soon, despite lots of rumours to the contrary, but hey ho, such is life. Media fans should certainly approve of that 6.1 inch OLED screen, which despite its diminutive stature is still a great way to take in a show on the go. The Full HD Plus resolution keeps that picture quality crisp, especially at this sort of size, while the HDR video delivers gorgeous contrast and lifelike visuals. But yes, of course, one of the big controversies of the Pixel 6a, if you will, is the fact that that display does top off its 60Hz refresh, which ain't great when most rivals do offer 90 or even 120Hz max refresh. I know that's a deal breaker for some, it's not for me, but I do miss that uber slick smoothness when I'm flicking about Android things like that. And while you have a stereo speaker arrangement here on the Pixel 6a, it ain't going to be busting any eardrums anytime soon. If there's any background noise at all, chances are you'll be struggling to hear what's going on. And sadly, yeah, there's bugger all headphone jack action here on the Pixel 6a. It's definitely a feature that seems to be dying a death here on mid-range mobiles, as well as those more expensive flagships. So I've been streaming all of my music wirelessly over Bluetooth 5.2. 
And for pretty much the entire six weeks, it's been very dependable, helped along by Google's dual antenna design. But when I first upgraded to Android 13, I did find for a couple of days, weirdly, there'd be a lot of stuttering and juddering just for the first minute or so after I connected to my headphones or to my speaker, and then it would sort itself out. Touch wood, thankfully, that seems to have been resolved just all by itself over the past week or so. So hopefully that won't crop up again. And once again, performance comes courtesy of Google's Tensor chipset co-crafted with Samsung and for everyday shenanigans, absolutely fine. No judders or stumbles to speak of. And thankfully, the gaming experience seems to have improved a bit over time here on the Pixel 6a as well. Frankly, Genshin Impact was a juddery mess when I first pulled this thing out of the box. But these days, the frame rate seems a lot more stable, even on those higher detail settings. Although, frankly, some other mid-range mobiles do perform better. Although weirdly, Google's game dashboard appears to have completely vanished off my Pixel 6a since I upgraded to Android 13. Not really sure what's going on there, not that it's a massive miss anyway. You got full Wi-Fi 6e support and the 5G connectivity has generally been stable as well. A couple of instances in my local area where the reception has just suddenly dropped for apparently no reason, but apart from that, it has been stable. And somehow Google has managed to cram a 4410 mAh battery into the Pixel 6a's teeny frame. Not a bad size at all, considering this is a very compact smartphone. And it's a little bit bigger than the Zen Phone 9's battery, not quite as big as the Xiaomi 12's. Now I've heard a lot of complaints from Pixel phone owners over the last couple of weeks that ever since they upgraded to Android 13, their battery life has absolutely tanked. Thankfully, touch word, I'm reporting the exact opposite here on the Pixel 6a. Since I upgraded to Android 13, the battery life seems to have got even better. Even when I'm absolutely hammering this thing, using the camera a lot, streaming loads of media, doing a little bit of gaming on the side and everything, I usually roll into bed with at least 20% left. And on more casual days, where I've literally just been doing a bit of messaging and web browsing and a bit of Wordle and stuff like that, while occasionally streaming some music, I found that I usually have at least half of that battery life remaining by the end of the day, which is friggin' great. Now, Google advertises the Pixel 6a as supporting fast charging, which is complete and utter bollocks. It usually takes well over an hour to charge back to full, depending on what charger you're using, of course. And yes, you do have to provide your own charger as part of the growing trend of manufacturers leaving those out of the box. And yeah, that's with adaptive charging disabled and everything as well. And no, there's no wireless charging support here on the Pixel 6a, but you know, it's a pretty rare feature at this sort of price point anyway, beyond like the nothing phone. And Oh God, don't make me see it. The iPhone SE 2020. So let's finish with one of the biggest arguments for buying the Pixel 6a over other mid-range Androids, and that is the camera tech. Now, 12.2 meg primary setup comes with built-in optical image stabilization, and it's ideal for snapping anything and everything your gorgeous little heart desires. It's a real point and shoot effort. Just aim the camera in generally the right direction, and that's about all the brain power you'll need to get good looking photos. If you're struggling against a bright background or some other HDR shenanigans, you can manually tweak the exposure levels with a quick swipe of your finger. An easy alteration for even better results. Google's cameras are masters when it comes to capturing colours just as they look in real life, even when the light is a bit pants. And night sight is fully automatic these days, so as long as you keep your hands still for a second or so, you'll get bright pics that aren't plagued by noise. And unlike most other manufacturers, Google does only serve up a very small selection of bonus camera modes and tools to play around with. So for instance, there's no pro mode to speak of, but there is a portrait mode that can be depended on to keep your subject crisp while smudging out the background. And the Pixel 6a also gives you the option of a 12 meg ultra wide shooter, which unlike most rivals can once again capture pretty natural looking snaps. Colors aren't distorted too much beyond a slight deepening of those bright blue skies and so on. For your home movies, you can shoot 4K video at 30 or 60 frames per second. And again, I approve of the stuff that this thing churns out. Vivid colors are again captured in full glory with plenty of details stuffed into every frame. Image stabilization impresses, keeping the picture as still as possible, even when you're walking at pace or piddling about on a boat. And any voices chatting around the phone are cleanly picked up, even against full on background noise. It's only when things get a bit darker that the Pixel 6a struggles, serving up quite murky results overall. Now the only real disappointment with the old Pixel 6 camera setup was the selfie camera, which proved frustratingly limited compared with the rear optics. Hence, I didn't exactly have high expectations when it came to snapping my mug with the Pixel 6a. Thankfully, this selfie shooter is actually pretty good, even when you move indoors into quite dingy spaces, as long as you and any fellow selfies aren't flapping about the place. 
It's not too fierce by high contrast shenanigans either. And again, like video capture, it's not until things get proper dark that it all gets a bit murky and not very nice to look at. And if you want to shoot a vlog or something with that front facing camera, it's full HD resolution capture, no 4K option sadly. It's quite zoomed in as well and you don't have an option to zoom out, just zoom in even further, which oh, nobody needs that. So that right there, my lovelies, is my full final frank review of the Google Pixel 6a after using it on and off as my full-time smartphone for the past six weeks. And I gotta say, yeah, it is a pretty strong all-rounder, but it does have its limitations, including, yeah, the 60 hertz display, not to mention the pretty standard mid-range mobile limitations like a lack of expandable storage and no bloody headphone jack as usual. But those grumbles aside, it is a highly enjoyable everyday blower and one that is pretty much perfect for any amateur photographers who want great looking pics and home movies with minimal effort. And chuck in the excellent software support and those Pixel exclusive features and it really is a blower that's easy to recommend despite the little bits I already moaned on about. And it sure as hell ain't another iPhone, iPhone, one of them Apple things. So that's what I reckon it'd be great to hear from you guys down below, especially if you've been rocking a Pixel 6a in your pants, pocket, purse, whatever. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell, I'll give a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!